Good morning. Good morning and welcome to uh, uh, broadcast today. Um, I'm Wendy Finch. I am the Director of Marketing and Professional Services here at PPI and I am accompanied by Kurt Egley. He's our Senior Application Specialist and BIM Team member. Um, so welcome, welcome Kurt. Thanks. Welcome to our first <laughs> glad to be here. First webinar where we're using our fancy webcam. Okay. Not intimidating at all, right? No, no. no. Okay. So I'm um, super excited uh, to bring the visualization design webinar here to to you folks today, and more excited that it's Friday. <laughs> I'm delighted. I bet you're ready for the weekend. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, now. So, Kurt's been traveling a lot um, the last uh, two to three months, um, doing a lot of on site consultation and training um, with our customers around Oregon and Washington. So, Kurt, tell me, um, you've been involved working with customers uh, on support cases, Revit families, and templates and training. What have you found to be the particular uh, growing demand for your time with these folks? Uh, well, if I had to pick one, I probably would say custom training, if that's not too broad. You know, basically what we do is uh, we'll sit down with a uh, list of topics with usually a point person at the firm or the company that uh, is interested in uh, getting us involved, and then we'll um, hone that list of topics to um, only the topics that are of particular interest to their team. And then the other thing that we do too is um, during the day or during multiple days, uh, different team members will jump in and out of the training um, depending on which kind of topics are of use to them. Then that way everybody maximizes their time too and um, they, they get what they need and still stay billable when they can. Right. Good. Good. Well, I know it's been a busy time for our customers and for us, so that's that's all, you know, it's a good busy for sure. So I'm just doing a real quick check here. I've got folks uh, messaging me that we're all good. Sound <laughs> seems to be good okay. and uh, um, and video is good so far. So we're, I'm going to turn things over to Kurt here in just a moment, but um, I do have um, one question for you, Kurt is as, as we dive into uh, the topic for today, I am curious as to what you think the, the most important ways that AEC customers are using visualization today. Um, well, um, probably the most obvious one would be uh, for marketing material, right? Uh, you're trying to make that animation or a still rendering that wins you the next job. Uh, that sort of thing, um, but because I, I think something that's kind of unique about the Autodesk solutions, instead of it just being a pretty picture, it is the same model that you use for construction documents, and that makes it unique. So as you're doing design development, uh, you can better visualize whether or not this is going to work. Now this might be aesthetics or it might be um, in a tight area within the plenum for our mechanical and plumbing and electrical folks. Um, but um, also uh, you can get the owner involved while you're doing this too, uh, partners and subcontractors, and let them visualize it as well, see how the project is coming and um, make intelligent decisions. Exciting. All right. Are you ready? I think we're yeah, ready. Sure. All right. All right. We're going to do, a, uh, I'm going to make a few uh, quick clicks here and turn things over to Kurt so we can see his screen. All right, so um, I'm going to be um, running through um, a, a variety of different topics. Some of them are going to just be straight up uh, rendering in products and um, so that you can kind of get the capabilities uh, better understanding there. Other ones will just be sort of go-to tools that I use all the time in several different products. So I'll, I'll bounce in and out as time permits here. Um, Revit will for sure be one of them. I'm going to start with that one. Uh, 3ds Max, that's another one in the AAC uh, collection that I wanted to show you. And uh, Navis Works Manage, I'll be working in as well. Um, then um, I'll probably come back to Revit as, as time is permitting, and then uh, Autodesk Live, I guess they're calling it Autodesk Revit Live these days. 
um, as uh, one more in the uh, fleet of um, capabilities that you could be using. So I'm, I'm going to start with this model. Um, I, you know, the, the model that I'm looking at here is a, an education center and uh, I should probably make the point as I'm visualizing this right now that this is the same one we're going to be using for construction documents. So if I go to one of the sheets right now, you'll see that there's wall sections through the building. Um, it's, it, here's another view of the model that's dimensions in nature. So, um, you know, we can uh, work on, on the sheet here as well. If, um, if I go back to this view, in terms of visualization though, um, one of the tools that I use for visualization is uh, the ability to turn on and off shadows here. So um, I'm just, I'll just do this now and then I'll point out a button, but you can come to one of my classes if you want to know where the buttons are and miss it. But uh, turning of the shadows on and off and setting the time of day um, can really help with uh, with uh, the vision. Now, part of this might be sun studies, but it might also be about marketing material where you're just plain or choosing a uh, time of day that casts the right amount of shadows uh, down here at the front door if that's where your uh, view is coming from. Um, the um, Let me head to a first floor plan here once. Get back down into a first floor plan. Um, another thing that I use for visualization is um, uh, what's called a selection box. Um, you can just uh, lasso uh, a number of items on your screen and uh, in 2016 this one came along right here uh, where where I can um, bring up the um, of the building that I uh, am zoomed in on uh, and have selected and then uh, better visualize that uh, through a selection box uh, where the section box is coming up in area. Now, um, if you haven't used the section box before, um, that's a pretty helpful one. I'm going to turn it on and off over here in the property palette. That will bring up the overall model here. Now I'm seeing outside of the building uh, the overall envelope. And the section box, the way that that works is um, to called up a, uh, here we go, it's probably, maybe I have it hidden in this view, let me see, yeah, I got it hidden, so let me unhide that for you, unhide element, come back to it, so when this box comes up like this, um, I usually go to one of the side views here, and then um, you can drag the controls down, and look inside the building here. I'll grab one of the controls here and slice through the top of the building. Uh, and then if you shift over into one of the side views, then uh, you're looking right down inside the rooms then, uh, and it's doing a, a section through the building. Uh, the topo surface is kind of interesting uh, with the use of, of the section box. If you have a topo surface up, it's only wafer thin, and then as soon as you get it over the top of the edges here, let me drag it in closer here, like this. Maybe I'll leave one side partially open for you so you can see. Drag that in a ways, and this in a ways. Now if you come back to it, and you look at it from the side, kind of interestingly, it is actually cutting through the dirt now as if it were 3D in nature. Um, so that, that can be another great visualization tool. So um, if, if we take a look, closer look here at the kind of shadows, the quality of shadows that are being cast across the building, um, I cast shadows on and off, but um, I will do shaded surfaces as well. So in terms of visualization for Revit, um, we can use, uh, I usually use um, hidden line and shaded, and then I'll show you realistic and the way that that works. If I go to hidden line, it gets rid of all the color um, across, the, across the model, 
the shaded will kick in with colors, um, but not necessarily realistic um, for us to work with. And if I go into realistic, it goes into a separate palette and we'll look at ping images, JPEGs and the like, that if you zoom in closer, you can see is a more realistic looking um, set of materials on there. Um, the place that that is, I'll just point you in that direction. If you go to the wall itself and get underneath the hood of editing it, you can see here that we're using uh, wood siding for that. And um, an advantage there will be that those materials, like the wood siding that we're seeing here, are being used across a common library um, to where wood siding as it appears in graphics. Here's the color that you saw earlier when it was in shaded mode and the surface pattern that was in shaded and in hidden. And then when I kicked over to realistic, which is just kind of a quick rendering version of it, um, it goes to grab this ping image right here uh, to um, use in its place. And that library there um, is that you're seeing off here to the side can be part of sister products, at least I call them sister products like 3ds Max and Navisworks and the like. So um, the other thing that I, I maybe would like to point out here too is I, I'm using um, ambient shadows. Maybe this is easiest if you see it in the hidden line. Um, ambient shadows can really make this pop out. They're, they're um, kind of, uh, some people might call them dirty shadows like here and here you might look at um, where if I don't have ambient shadows on, uh, for example, uh, here I go to here for graphic display options, shadows, turn ambient shadows off. Uh, it flattens it out quite a bit. Do you see how suddenly there's not as much depth? And that's a really easy one with a three-dimensional model to be able to get a sense of depth and, and a better understanding of what is behind what. You know, like right here you can see pretty clearly that this duct is in the foreground behind with those walls behind. So um, we, can do, um, we can do renderings as well in here. Um, if... if um, uh, the realistic view of um, the materials that we're going to get applied, like, at, like we're seeing right now, in what we call in canvas, uh, you can create a rendering in the product, and I won't do one today, but uh, we can adjust um, the uh, lights that we'd like to use, interior, exterior, or combination thereof, what kind of a background with the sky and adjust the exposure from here if we want to. Um, and then a little later on I'll talk about uh, rendering in the cloud, uh, which we'll come back to that. Um, the um, finished renderings, you know, I, I didn't want to take time to do too many renderings. I'll do one of them, I think, in Navisworks, but I, I wanted to just show you a couple of the renderings that uh, are uh, from Revit itself. Um, if you if you draw your eyes attention down here to this granite uh, top, um, they're using um, a ray tracer rendering engine now in Revit, uh, which um, had been around, but it's the sole one, and uh, you'll see it in other products too. It gives more physically accurate renderings, both of light and materials. And so you're seeing that kind of a reflection uh, on the materials there. And here's another one as well. Um, Revit itself uh, can be really um, a terrific tool for uh, creating marketing material like we're seeing here uh, today. Um, uh, next, let's see. Um, I, maybe before I leave this one, I'll come back here, uh, back to the first floor once again, and just uh, point out this. If, if we go, sometimes with... Um, uh, rendering styles. If I zoom in here a little bit closer, you'll be able to see. Um, it looks a little bit um, hard, hard lined, I guess, and not so much like back in the day when you know we would do a sketch and the like. So you can adjust that as well um, with a graphic display option for sketchy lines. Um, for example, if I if I take the extension and up it. I'll up it to about a three. Look in this area right here when I hit apply. 
uh, the lines will slightly come over the top of each other um, as if we were doing a sketch. And the jitter, now you can get, um, really make a messier file if you, if you make it jitter too much, but a little bit of a jitter, if I hit apply here, you'll see it just kind of shakes the line back and forth um, to create a more hand feel to it. Okay, so um, I'm going to head cancel out of that once and head over to another product here. Let's go to Navisworks now. So I'm using uh, Navisworks Manage for this, and I thought instead of um, instead of uh, doing this one and then calling it up today, I thought I'd just do it for you live here, even though it takes a minute. Um, I'm going to use um, a Revit project and bring it in. Um, there's, you can pump it out of Revit if you want to first. It's, it's faster than what you're going to see here today if you do it that way. But um, the, the options are generally the same. Uh, one that I might uh, draw your attention to, this is, this, these are the options under the hood on when I'm bringing Navisworks or Revit files into Navisworks or any one of these other formats here. For Navisworks, um, and Navisworks use of Revit files, I, I wanted you to notice this one right here, try and find missing materials uh, because the shared materials become an important uh, way to um, make this a speedy uh, journey from Revit design into Navisworks where we might want to do visualization, walk around in the model, and or do clash detection is, is a common one. I'm going to use a slightly different data set with this one. I'll kind of bounce back and forth between a couple of data sets. And I'll just open up the Revit model directly. I'm actually behind the hoods, um, behind the hood. Um, Navisworks is making a cache file out of it so it can read it uh, more, more quickly. Um, and so I can come directly down inside my uh, Revit model. Uh, start to explore it. Here I'm looking at the hangers above, um, head down inside the building, uh, save the views in there and work around in, inside. Um, uh, also, if, um, if you want to, you can use, they actually have a walk tool in here, and I could say walk, and I can uh, turn on collision and turn on gravity, uh, and then just start walking across the floor here. Um, as you would a game. Um, also, there's the ability to uh, fly as well. So if I come back to this and say I'd like to fly, um, you know, and just head right up this stairs and out and through the tunnel again. Okay, right about now, um, a few of you are getting a little bit ill, so I'll stop doing that. <laughs> But uh, um, actually, it's it's getting better. They they found originally that um, that qu quite a large percentage would actually get kind of sick. But um, <laughs> uh, these days, uh, people are are uh, I guess maybe because you know in our in our um, our uh, past, we've all had a chance to play on games and get over that part of it. So, so the software has to come with a warning label. <laughs> I know, I know. It used to be like 20% of the people. There's a guy I used to work with that couldn't teach Navisworks because uh, it'd make him sick when he would um, start walking around, flying around inside the models. So um, it, yeah, it comes with Dramamine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll throw some of that in. Anyway, the, the flying is, is really pretty nice when you have like an overall site from, a, you know, a campus kind of an environment. And I like to walk around uh, when we're, when we're in the, uh, inside of the building. Um, so so um, it, another thing that I, I really like about um, Navisworks is its ability to uh, section as well. So um, I'm going to click on Move here and uh, show you its version of um, visualization of the model with regard to something kind of similar to the box that we looked at earlier. I'm just dragging the, um, the section gizmo, they call it, back and forth here. Um, and I'll enable the section, but back off again. Um, it, it's 
something that I wish uh, Revit would eventually get here, which is dynamic sectioning of the building. Just as I move my cursor, it's cutting as I go. Um, so Navisworks can be really good about uh, and Matt, um, putting together, aggregating a model, and then also turning around and um, letting you um, explore it, you know, and then of course do interference checks as well. Um, so, um, with um, in terms of reviewing the model, let's try. Let's do this next. Let's go. Um, let's go to the rendering ones. I talked about the materials a, a little. Bit that were being shared here. So I'm looking at the Autodesk library now. Um, it's made a lot easier to jump back and forth between uh, products uh, depending on which one you want to use out of the collection here. So um, a lot of these um, materials are right contained within a common library and then if you want to you can if you're using custom materials you can save them out and then load them up uh, for somebody else to use in, in a library that you share with them, uh, such as carpet or brick or patterns or the like. Um, for the, for the um, rendering of this, I'll, I'll just go with low quality here once so that it gets done in a fairly short amount of time here. Um, and I'll go ahead and start, start the rendering. Um, it, it does several passes. I, I wanted you to see, I guess I don't think of Navisworks um, too quickly when I think about rendering, but um, it's holding the same materials. I usually use Navisworks for um, uh, clash detection and aggregation of the model are probably the two biggest uh, uses. Uh, maybe the 4D aspect is uh, probably another one as well. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get the, um, I think I maybe pressed the button and canceled back out of it here. Let me get it going again. There we go. Um, so the um, the materials that we had used and, and applied back in um, in the Revit model are now being used here, and so you can see down on the floor. It's not done rendering yet. It's continuing to do the ray trace rendering, but you can see the reflections off the glossy tile on the floor and the lights starting to kick into play uh, with their. Uh, illuminance that's coming from uh, the Revit family that started it in the first place. So, um, and with that, let me just hit stop because it's going to continue to render from there. Okay, so um, let, let's go take a look at Max next. So this is 3D, um, 3ds Max that I'm jumping into next with that same initial building that I had uh, in the Revit session a little bit earlier. Um, with regard to uh, materials here, you can see that the same material that we saw uh, briefly anyway when I went into realistic has come across into um, this uh, uh, Revit model as well. If I go to um, the, the material editor, uh, there's two different kinds. There's the more traditional compact one. Uh, looks like this. Maybe you'll remember it from the past uh, if you started with 3ds Max some time ago. Um, the other one that um, I work with more commonly these days anyway is uh, what's called the slate material editor right here. And um, one of the things that I like about that is you know I can pick a material. Uh, let me try. Let me go with um, metallic paint, for example, um, and, and I say, you know, metallic paint, I want to wire it. You see how you can wire together um, effects, right? So bump maps and uh, forces, and but I can simply drag and drop it onto a surface, and now it'll use that material instead. Um, let me go with, uh, let me go with uh, glass here once. So here you can see how these are wired together. Um, uh, effects with the material and then I just simply drag and drop onto the surface and now I have glass although um, probably architect types wouldn't be changing their walls to glass I do use that um, now and then uh, in the mechanical electrical plumbing realm uh, because I'll take the materials that are 
uh, walls and ceilings and roofs and floors and change them to glass so that when I do walk through the the building or an animation, um, I can see right up through the ceiling and see uh, my ductwork and the like. So that's what we're seeing there. You know, um, in, also in terms of visualization here, uh, let me close this back down here once. Um, in terms of visualization, uh, sometimes the materials just plain get in the way. And um, one of the things that uh, 3ds Max can do is to uh, change the um, change the materials and get them out of the way, basically, and stylized. Um, graphite, for example. Say that I want to look at the building like this. Now, th this is not a photo of the building. I can still orbit. See, I'm, I'm orbiting around in here, right? Whoops, now I orbited right off the screen. But I'm looking at the building it, it, as if it were um, a charcoal, right? Um, there's another one here. Let me try a different one. Stylized with colored pencil. I, I kind of like colored pencil. And that's that's some one of my favorites. Something like this. Um, and then uh, then a few more under here. I'll just let you take a look at the list here. There's acrylic and pastels. Uh, tech, for example. Pastels is kind of nice. It does something kind of close to the colored pencil sort of a look, but makes it look like you're, you're on a paper with a heavy tooth on it. And then there's another one actually too that's just plain. Um, you can change it to clay as well. Um, if you want to take materials totally off the, off the, off the board, um, and I, I guess part of the reason that I, I use this from time to time is uh, you've, you've maybe been in a meeting already with an owner where you were trying to discuss do we want aluminum siding or wooden shakes or brick, you know, what do we want? And your model at the time has brick in it and the customer hates that. The owner, so we'll go with aluminum siding just like you like. And then they can't get over it. They continue to focus on something that is already um, past. So to be able to come in and say, you know, instead that, you know, I, I want to stylize this and and not not consider it to be uh, the materials as the first thing in the um, for them to look at. Uh, 3ds Max is really good for that. Now, um, probably the two places where Max um, resides at its at its best and that is near photographic quality renderings and cinematic animation so it's walk through so what I'm talking about there uh, let me see if I can get back to this fairly fast here once I wanted to show you um, the kind of kind of work we can do let's see this would be max output here <clears throat> for example um, when, once, once you are doing the model, and keep in mind, this is the model that we need for the construction documents anyway. We're not building this just for the rendering of it. We're, we're building it so that we can um, actually get the construction done, and then it so happens that we can use it for animations or, or renderings like what we're seeing here. And I'll, I'll show you what this model looks like in a minute, but I, I won't be hitting render on it live. But this is one done with a bit of a tilt to the to the um, to the camera there. Um, let me show you. Um, uh, additionally, though, with uh, in terms of animations, um, you can set up a path and then uh, have the camera follow along with the path as you go and cut from one scene to another like you're seeing here and that can help with the visualization as well All right, and Max is well suited for that I'll let that play for a moment so um, with that <clears throat> this uh, still that um, I have right here uh, let me call up that model back in Max again here okay uh, let me get out of this one and then uh, turn around and reset. And let me open up 
on this one. This will take just a moment. It's the same view that I used to do the rendering you saw just a moment ago. It's a really fairly big model. So we'll give it here a second. So here's what it, here's what the model looked like before um, I hit render on it. When it comes up, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> like I said, it's a pretty big model. It has all the lights on and everything. Okay, at least on my screen anyway. Now it has come up. But you know what you're seeing there. Um, the little globes and what look like um, diamonds hanging off. The, that's the shape of the light, right? It's the quality of the light um, and that's going to be used. It's a night scene, right? And ultimately, that's the one that created uh, this image right here uh, when, when we did render. And the reason I'm not doing that one live for us right now is because that took 48 minutes to render okay that one that one still okay. Wendy says thanks <laughs> but I'm not going to do that um, but this you know what this brings me to though is um, uh, rendering in the cloud um, so now uh, this is um, um, I'm doing I did this from within Revit and then chose the button just below. So what I'm talking about is this one right here. Um, I chose render in the cloud instead of the regular render here. And um, when you hit, maybe it'd be better to head to a 3D view here once. Um, if I go render in the cloud and it'll step you through and say, here's what you're going to do. Um, instead of having just the choices that I would have had with um, rendering um, earlier in the in canvas rendering of Revit, um, I get the ability to do still images, but I can do a panorama or a stereo panorama. So, you know, if you have the uh, some kind of a VR uh, device, you know, whether that's your, your phone with a cardboard uh, holding on to your head or a more sophisticated one, um, uh, uh, you can visualize uh, more readily immersed in it. And uh, in, in the luminance as well, which you cannot get that from the uh, regular product as well. So what, um, what happens here is we, we use um, cloud units to get it done. And depending on uh, what size you're choosing, like it says required here, zero. If I kick myself up to extra large, it'll say that's going to take five of your cloud units a third of a million left, so um, eat your heart out on that one. <laughs> Autodesk is good to us. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, I, I won't hit that, but let me um, visit. Where it goes is it um, takes what is necessary from your model and pumps it up into the cloud, and then here, let me sign in here once, um, and then it's in the gallery there for me to visit and or invite my uh, customer and owner to, to visit. So I'm going to sign in and take a look at um, the renderings I had done. I did a sample of each of them there. Uh, let me look at these uh, these four. <clears throat> so here's the still, um, which um, this was of that Metro line that we looked at a little bit earlier in Navisworks, that Revit model. Um, what, what's kind of interesting here is once it pumps it up there, you can turn around it. You can ad adjust the exposure and then uh, re-render using the new settings. So instead of pumping your model back, if it hasn't been changing, you're just trying to tweak it to get that perfect rendering done. Um, it doesn't have to upload the model once again. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, if you hover here for a moment you'll see a uh, second from the bottom there it says render time 23 minutes so uh, some of that has to do with how busy they are that just meant that it was in the queue for a while till they could get to me but the rendering happens really fast um, another one that I did uh, this one here is um, you, you may be only be able to see subtle movement because I'm pretty deep I probably should do this one again uh, pretty deep underneath the um, underneath here, but the sun moves across. I think you can see especially in this area over here as uh, we're doing a sun study with that. That one would have been more fun if I was outside, you know, or from a different view at top landing. 
Um, this one right here is a panorama that I did. I did the stereo panorama, so it's going to look a little funky here if I um, slide it around. Maybe I shouldn't move too fast, so go to meeting and keep up with me here. But um, instead of taking just the regular Revit camera and only in pointing in one direction like the still, um, it takes wherever your camera is and does a, a you know, 360 bubble, so I can look down and up and to any side. It looks kind of fuzzy because I did the uh, stereo uh, version of this uh, for uh, stereo goggles. So, and um, that render time took an hour to get done. And then this one, the last one I wanted to show you here was this. Um, this is uh, something that I, I use with my uh, lighting uh, designers and electrical uh, engineers when we're doing lighting analysis. Um, we took the same model and then during the rendering I, I told it that I wanted 100 to 1,000 foot candles uh, for the uh, array of colors and then it drops in colors based on what the foot candles are. So I can't do that with um, out-of-the-box uh, Revit. Um, instead, I need to uh, use a cloud service like this, at least for out-of-the-box. So um, let me go back to Revit and do um, just shift gears here just a little bit once. I'm going to close out of this model here and open up a different one in terms of visualization. So um, I'm going to go to a tech shop that I got here that has a point cloud associated with it. So point clouds got really interesting uh, several years ago when um, Autodesk acquired uh, Recap. Uh, well, Revit was an acquisition too for that matter. Um, and so they've been picking up technologies that are really um, pretty pretty useful to us. So if you're not familiar with point clouds in terms of visualization, um, the, the company was called Recap, and so is the product here. Um, and it's about reality capture, hence the name Recap. So you can see here that you know, they set up a 3D laser scanner. Uh, and you, and it, like one of them was sitting right here where the circle is because it doesn't catch too much in, in the way of, doesn't catch anything underneath the tripod uh, where it's sitting but then you um, reposition it in another location like over here and then you're able to pick up uh, from a different angle what that first one hadn't picked up. And so if you're doing a renovation, you know, like a processing plant or something like that, uh, imagine how nice this can be to be able to um, capture it and bring it into the Revit model. And then this way, you know, as you're working, I can drop in a and say that I wanted to be able to place these lights here, for example, and start to replicate the same space. I can say, you know, from, from here to there, uh, show me that, and then I'll go to that view. All right. And then here's the lights right here, and then I can do a measurement. I mean, I'm just working around in, inside of the Revit model itself. And from here to here, it's at 14 foot 9. And then back here in level 1, I can drop in a light, so systems, lighting fixture, shop light. Let's put it in at 14, 9, uh -huh, right here. Drop it in. And now I've got um, a Revit light inside of the model you know, and or your own design, I mean, that's part of it, you know, like if um, you're changing the lighting in here and so on and so forth, um, it becomes uh, yet one more tool in the way that we can visualize uh, design um, with the um, point clouds in Navisworks 3ds Max, uh, Inventor as well, which I'm not doing here today, and AutoCAD too, they put the engine in there to Make, let us um, have really um, huge uh, point clouds as a part of this. Um, the very last one I wanted to show you here, and then we'll, we'll call it quits here, is um, Autodesk Revit Live. And um, here is, let me just open up one of these here once, and, and we'll take a little bit of a tour around.
Um, what, what you're seeing here, now this is not in the Autodesk collection, this is a separate uh, subscription, but the, I'm seeing it with the free viewer uh, for starters. You, you start with the Revit project, it's very much centered on Revit, um, and um, none, none of the other product mixes, uh, so they're concentrating on that. Uh, here's a model that was done in Revit, and then it had a little bit of a topo surface on it, and I chose the button, extend to horizon, and the topo surface just continued on to the horizon there. Uh, um, once I uh, click on the ground, it drops me down to the ground, and I can begin to walk around like a game. And so uh, and away you go, right? So um, what the subscription that I referred to is the editor, so that's Revit Live Editor, and then you, uh, once it recognizes who you are, you know, like a, um, after you signed in, then you uh, pump your model up into the cloud, and then it, it says now you're in the queue, and then it comes back down again um, for a file where you can do things like look at the camera views that were in your Revit model, um, maybe choose a new point of view that you would rather have. Um, here I am up on, I had created a camera view up on the balcony uh, way up above and I'm just going to position my cursor down here on the grass down below and click and instead of jumping down, if you double click it will actually take you to the, um, it'll take you to the spot that you double clicked on. If you single click, it'll <laughs> once again the Dramamine comes out, right? <laughs> but it's it's taking me down through the stairs and and uh, walking me around to where uh, that original position was. Um, beyond that, too, one of the things that I really like about uh, Live is uh, with this Revit model, um, I can get at the information associated with this too. So if I click on uh, something within the Revit model, it tells me that it's a curtain panel and uh, you know the offset is this. These are the Revit properties that we're looking at here in the um, dialog off to the side and if I can set sun position as well so I can check it out. It looks to see what the sun position was uh, for the Revit project when it came out and then from there and if I maybe I come over here to this end of the building, look around a little bit. I must have been choosing. I guess I went for morning here, so the the sun is just coming up. Anyway, I can see where the where the uh, shadows are cast and all um, at different times of day on my project too. So um, that's just kind of a quick tour of um, several ones that came to mind that are kind of my go-to tools. Uh, with regard to visualizing, whether it's for the owner or whether it's for uh, working with subcontractors to help them better understand my design and uh, for marketing material as well. So, Mr. Egley, thank you so much for your time. My I pleasure. Appreciate, I appreciate the work that you put into this and um, some really cool and fascinating things uh, coming down the pike. So, again, thank you for attending and we'll see you on the next one.